Oh, please. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> roll call. Here. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. Councilor Tala. Here. Councilor Denning. Here. Councilor Edmund. Here. Councilor Hall. Mayor Copeland. Here. Deputy Mayor Lee. Here. Councilor Mangini. Here. Councilor Scott. Here. Councilor Suze. Here. We have nine members present to our Okay, uh, budget public hearing. Tonight is Public Works. All of Public Works? Yes. Welcome. Uh, well, well, real quick, if I could just go ahead and hand it out to you. Uh, right now, I'm handing out the uh, reports that include the year to date. Uh, there's also in WPC, it was missing uh, a couple pages at the end so that's there as well um, also i handed out any of the changes that uh, the major substantive cha changes i made to the dpw budgets which you see was not a lot and the last thing that i handed or the other thing i handed out was a memo uh, i received some budget questions earlier today from uh, councillor edgar i answered those everybody has them we're good to go okay. so, Okay, can everyone see that? Do we want to dim more lights? You okay in the back? Okay, good. Anyway, welcome to the DPW budget presentation for next fiscal year. Our presentation is approximately half an hour, although we're going to stop at one or two spots uh, to hand out some additional information that doesn't go well on the screen and make sure you understand what we're talking about. A couple things related to major initiatives that are in the budget, we want to make sure we, we cover those. So we'll have pauses, but it's really up to you how long those pauses are. This is a the agenda for the meeting tonight, similar to last year. And we'll start with an overview of the public works. And this is a new slide. Uh, the point of this slide is to show you that the purple, which is the capital, the proposed capital expenditures for the next fiscal year, is significantly more than the operating budget that we're gonna spend most of this evening on. And total of $49 million flowing through public works in the next fiscal year where everything comes to fruition. And because of this, we will also spend a few minutes on capital few more minutes than we normally do on the capital part of the budget. This is a <coughs> slide you saw a few weeks ago from the town manager. Uh, we adopted it and as he said, and we'll say again, the Public Works is the largest department on the town side. In the general fund budget breakdown, it's 30% and that does not include roads, water pollution control, non-departmental, and other capital and if you added all that money in as I mentioned on the previous slide that percentage would be much bigger number of employees by division we will dissect each division briefly we have 154 employees that does not include summer seasonal help and this uh, pie chart includes all the initiatives that we have we have I think three full-time employees two at Stowe and an electrician and some part-time employees, which we'll talk about as we go through the budget presentation. They're all included in this pie chart. Here's the management team. We're all here except Dave Tuttle, who's on vacation, but he's very happy the meeting's being taped. First thing he does when he gets home is he's gonna watch. So thank you, ETV. And of course, our newest member, Rose Bouchard, <laughs> sitting to my left, our business operations manager, who you all have met. They're all here to help me answer questions and hopefully help you understand the budget. The budget does support your goals. We think it helps advance the infrastructure and service to the public. It does include a second electrician. It includes putting the Stowe School back into service. And a new thing is the vehicle replacement plan, which Derek Kennedy presented to you on December 15th, and he and Rick Davenport can talk more about that. That is integral to the Public Works Department. We are very happy to get a stable, steady funding for equipment that hopefully will let us 
get our equipment where it needs to be over a period of time. That is new this year, though, the vehicle replacement plan. Again, borrowing from a town a manager slide from two weeks ago, I don't know if you remember, you saw this. Items one, two, three are verbatim from his slide. Major factors affecting the town budget, health insurance, the wage increases from contractual agreements, and putting the Stowe School back into service. Those affected the town budget. They are big impacts on the public works budget as well. Uh, the impact on each division varies. We also have some insurance allocations, which can be significant, and we'll call those out. And we also have the benefit this year of some gasoline pricing <coughs> reduction. As you know, the price of gas has come down from a year ago. We use a fair bit of gas, and we have budgeted a lower per gallon rate. What I'm going to do right now is, uh, well, I'll do this slide, then I'm going to pause for a second. This is the operating budget, and uh, total for public works is a little under 5%, with water pollution control about 4.6%. The, the change per division varies significantly. We actually have, actually have a decrease in the refuse and resource management division. We have a significant in, increase over 8% in buildings and grounds. We'll tell you why in a minute. Overall, we have a $969,000 increase, of which a significant part of that is due to several factors. So at this point, I'm just going to pause for one moment. We're going to hand out a chart on the Stowe School expenses. We can talk about it now, or you can uh, just take a look at it. I'll have Billy Taylor uh, call, talk about it very briefly and answer any questions. But the reason we're passing this out now is because it will come up in many different slides and it's a significant cost impact to public works. Go ahead, Bill. Okay, well, uh, the rest of the counselors are getting the sheet. Uh, the sheet that you will have or have before you is our uh, best estimate of the funds that we think will be needed to put uh, Stowe School back into full operation next year. Um, the columns are well, we haven't we haven't itemized uh, by budget account a dollar amount, and then there's columns that show you uh, the expenses that are not personnel related, the expenses that are buildings and grounds only, and custodial. Obviously, it will affect both buildings and grounds and custodial division. step down each one of these but the, the big items are uh, the utilities natural gas to heat the building <coughs> electricity uh, and then the custodial salaries and we uh, estimated the need for two full-time one part-time custodian to staff the building um, and then of course there's the various uh, fringe benefit accounts for those salaries supplies and uh, machinery. We need uh, a couple of vacuum cleaners, uh, an auto scrubber, a square scrubber in order to keep the building maintained. And then up in the up in the B and G area up at the top, um, we've estimated the additional cost in, in the various accounts to provide the uh, the um, materials they need to to maintain the building and the grounds. Thank you. So we can either stop here and take some questions or we can keep going and come back to this. Might as well take some questions. Donna? What percentage of the building is going to be utilized? My understanding is, is that it's going to be fully utilized. It's going to be fully utilized by Board of Ed and by, and the town is going to take the whole operational part on its budget. None of the grant money they're bringing in. Yeah, the grant money that they're bringing in is operational for their their portion, the okay. classrooms. I think there may be a little bit of capital money well, involved. That, and of course, we're operations anyway yeah. in the buildings. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Gina? Thank right. you. Um, in a normal, let's say, K-5 school, how many custodians do you have? Um, this, this low, well, 
to answer directly is uh, normally there's two full-time, mm -hmm. one during the day, one in the evening, and supplemented by a part-time or half-time. So this, what we've proposed is uh, similar or the same as you can see in the other uh, elementary schools. Okay. And Will there still be evening activities there? I mean, I know if the daycare's there, it'll be operational all year long. It's unlike, let's say, a regular school that doesn't really have a summer program, I guess some of them do. But will there be evening programs too there? Does anybody know? And I'm just we we may be using it for okay. some recreation type programs. Okay. But in right. terms of, uh, you know, unlike some of the other uh, elementary schools where you have PTO meetings or or uh, school related meetings there since it's not going to be a school there probably won't be those type but I'm not sure exactly uh, FRC or right. what the uh, what the uh, schools programs really entail in terms of any any you know uh, meetings or whatever so okay thank you Red yeah. well, when we sat in this room with the board of education Back into shape. Now, is this in addition to the state money? There was state money for students, so much per head. There was also talk about money for putting the school back into operation. Well, is I this think in addition to it, or, or am I wrong in, in that? Yeah, this what they're talking about tonight is just the operational, annual operational monies we need to, right. to fund it. Well, I asked them that night what the cost was going to be at the time to do it. Nobody could give it. At least you've given a figure now, Billy. But I thought there was state money involved in this, too. Not, in, addition, not, in addition to the pupil. Yeah, not not for no. ongoing operational costs. Except, I, you know, for the schools, that, that is accurate. But not for us. So they're going to get whatever money comes to use on that side of it, and none of it will have to do right here. Correct. Correct. You know I voted no. Tom? Now we consolidated some services, or some buildings, I should say. How do you factor in our lease, the leases we used to use, uh, have yeah. uh, with the uh, daycare units, um, <clears throat> the moving of the buildings, the consolidation of the buildings? That's all. How, how, how does that factor in on these yeah, $8? dollars <coughs> There's going to be minimal savings on the other side. You know, the leases ran out in last year's budget mm -hmm. so uh, we already took all the savings from that as part of the current year's budget I'm not that's I guess I'm, I'm saying it wrong so tell me what we're what we we're leasing before and what we're not leasing today that amount of money offsets really what we're paying into this today so because mm -hmm. we're not leasing anymore no well, if we were le time. still leasing that right if we were still leasing that would cost us money we're right. no well, longer leasing because we went to a a full school because so, we consolidated it what okay let me try it again yeah, so what, right. we, what we were leasing was South Road yeah it was about hundred and thirty some thousand dollars a year in lease right in the current year's budget already accounts for us moving from South Road to Alcorn yes so that's you know any savings was already taken as part of the current year's budget yeah, I'm not talking savings, but at one point we did spend $130,000 for a lease, yes. which we are not spending now because we're at Alcorn School. Or right. we're at uh, um, yeah. well, we're Alcorn. Right. Because we're out Alcorn. Right. right. Yep. So, and then the moving also, the consolidations of the, these also were some of Right. Well, the big, yeah, the big, uh, you know, the shifting was the, the moving of the high street facility operations as well as the Alcorn operations into one one facility which we saved uh, you know right off the top one uh, supervisory position um, you know the so again but that's part of this year the structure of the current year's budget mm -hmm. um, you know what I was talking about was operationally we, we are going to be relocating um, uh, the social services operations out of the village center into the, the former, former FRC building on High Street. Right. Um, we still have to provide heat to that building, but it'll be at a lesser degree than, mm -hmm. than what it you know is currently. So I mean, there's going to be savings. It's going to be minimal, and, and really probably not a lot to talk about, to be honest. But 
So there are some savings there, but not really a, a large amount. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Donna? I guess this is more, Matt, there's still money left that would have to be paid back to the state if we did not reutilize this building as an educational. Right. And that, it, you know, follows yeah, on to Tom. Yeah. It's not a lease savings, it's actually a, a savings that we would be not paying. I don't know what's about, left. About $800,000. I was just going to, I thought it was about that. Yeah. So Thanks for that's me the on savings. That. <laughs> 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 you know, I you know, I think I, I know. I knew where you were going. Yeah, and and, and I guess that's what I'm trying to wrap what, my head around. What what we're doing now, we talked about three years ago in terms of how to to restructure our operations and try to make them efficient from the operational piece. I think the biggest difference to this really is the schools wanting to to put their their operations in there as well, because again, we we were looking at it. You know, even two years ago, when we started talking about this with the schools, they hadn't put forward, you know, what they wanted to do there. And so we made the assumption that it was just going to be um, our, our child development center, which again, wouldn't necessitate two full-time uh, custodial people. And so when, when you bring in the, the scale of operations that they are, we, we are now operating a, a elementary school. We're going to be up in the 300 plus range. And, and again, because they have uh, school operations there, it starts you know, requiring different, um, different types of staffing in terms of custodian there at all times um, during the day. Uh, you know, we're, we, it, it, so it just, it scaled it up a lot more than what we were considering when we thought we were gonna be the only uh, group in that building. That's, that's how it was portrayed two years ago. Right, and, and going back to two years, this was a very good idea two years ago, and you know now we're just looking at the, the and it's still a good idea as far as I'm yeah. concerned, but it's still now we're looking at the price tag of it, and it kind of gives a little bit of yeah. You know, we got to think back three years ago, and I mm -hmm. who expected this? Right, right. So I'm trying to justify this in my own yeah, <laughs> mind well, I, I think of why it went up so yeah. so much. Right, and that that's that is that's the, the key. That's it. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Anyone else on Harry Beecher Stowe? Mm -hmm. We're going to put a security guard in this place too. Yeah. That's some stays. Red? Just <coughs> clear me up. I'm a little fuzzy here. There's going to be two classrooms. Smart. That's the four year old. The four -year -old ones. I, I think there's going to be five classrooms total but only two qualify for the uh, grant that council authorized. Right, but there's going to be five all told. I believe it's five, yes. Don't, I, I, don't hold me to that number. I think it's five. That I didn't know. Plus, we're going to have the high street operation and the yes. all of our All of our uh, child development center operations will be there. Both plus, plus the FRC from Hazardville yeah. is relocated there. And th that's it. Uh, I think there's going to be a office maybe and some uh, meeting space for uh, kite and I think I'm leaving something else out I just can't remember everything there's, there might be one more thing I just I don't remember I just just wanted to clear in my mind what's going to be with an SRO there. yeah they're going to put another $27 an hour in there plus 2% Questions on Harriet Beecher Stowe. And just as a reminder, when you're speaking, pull the microphones closer to your mouth, please. Ed, go ahead. So now I look at a price tag of. Yeah, Ed does. It. Yes, you do. Not, do. not for you, but for ETV. Oh, for the TV. So yeah. now we're. So I'm looking at a price tag of eight thousand eight hundred dollars for machinery. We were in that school before. We'll pull everything out of there, and now whatever we use at Stowe or, I mean, what we use at High Street or whatever for machinery, you're talking about vacuum cleaners for $8,000 and scrubbers or whatever. What do we do with the material that was there prior to it, and it's only been closed uh, a year? We rented it to... to right, but prep. we didn't have any, any of our equipment. Had we took all of our equipment out of there. Right. And what and happened to it? And we're going to purchase all new. Well, most likely that equipment that was in there, because we had been replacing all the equipment 
in our schools because it was substandard. So unless I think you want to go back to the mops, <laughs> we have to buy new equipment. Well, yes, I'd like to go back to the mops because right now, by the looks of the, the two budgets with the school department and the, and the town, uh, we're out of control here. That's all I got. Any other questions on Stowe? Okay, thank you. I just want to make one other point, two other points here. One is that the, the comparison that you see here is with the original adopted budget for 2015 versus what's being proposed for 2016. There has been one revision to the current year's budget, which is significant. That I did not include because for the purposes of our discussions and for you to understand it, we just felt it was clearer not to throw that in there. It would actually make our budget look much, much better, FYI. So we didn't put it in there. We just think it would it's, it's more transparent not to put that transfer in there, number one. Number two is... And just tell us what transfer you're referring to. There was a recent to. transfer for snow removal. Right. And that would skew these numbers a bit. The other point I want to make is I know the manager handed out a list of some cuts that he made to the public works budget. Just so you know, uh, before we submitted our budget to the manager, we were looking at every line. And we made some significant cuts in our divisions as well because we wanted to make sure we weren't presenting anything that was over 5%. As bad as that seems, it was worse <coughs> before we made some last minute cuts across the board. So those are not listed there, but we can certainly give those to you. Okay, um, I'll move on. Uh, so the total increase of DPW is about $969,000. And the point of this slide is to show you what I call the headwinds. So before we started looking at any new DPW programs and what have you, we were dealing with almost $800,000 of increases in the budget. Embedded in that is the stove numbers that you saw. There's also health insurance increases that were across the department and other contractual salary increases. So we really had a tight time here looking at programs, and we really tried to fine tune our, our analysis. One of the things we, we like to look at is department-wide overtime, and of course it varies division by division. But the last three years, our overtime in the department has been remarkably steady. Uh, it's been about $900,000 give or take just a little bit, despite all kinds of different factors. Those are the first three bars. And we've been budgeting something significantly less than that. Now, already this year, on the projected for 2015, we're already at about $850,000. That's where we are. And to get us to the end of the year, we took an act, you know, looked at what we typically would have in overtime the last three months. That would bring us over a million dollars. Now, if you assume, and we have a slide later on, that about $200,000 of this year's overtime is because of the extraordinary snow, and back that out, we are still looking at a department-wide overtime similar to the last three years. So that seems to be where we're at on the overtime, although we are not budgeting that amount. We haven't been, and we didn't do it this year. We're still hoping we can cut that, but the reality is we've been spending in a normal year, around $880,000 department-wide on overtime. Uh, then operating budget by division, and uh, we'll just keep moving on. Let's go division by division. First, we'll look at building and grounds, which is the largest budget division, primarily because all the uh, energy, electric, and natural gas accounts are in this division. An example of the kind of work they do, this is a before and after, the FRC at Stowe, obviously the left before, obviously the right after, high quality work, which we're proud of our team for. And on the operating side, some of the factors here, in the Stowe, Stowe impacts, $125,000 here. Um, they had a slight decrease in gasoline, and we budgeted a full-time electrician. We're going to talk about that in one second. 
They had a significant increase in their workers' comp allocation. As you remember, I said some divisions were really impacted by insurance allocations. This division was. That led to an overall 8% increase. In addition to the things we talked about before, health insurance and contractual salary increases, I'm not going to repeat those for every division. Um, and again, there's an emergency action plan for Prospect Street budget. It's not a lot of money, but I wanted to tell you that we are hoping to do that. So at this time, I would like to just pause. And we have another handout related to the electrician. We want to walk you through that full-time electrician position. Okay, well, that's being handed out. Um, for some time, we've been uh, talking about the need to have a second electrician on the staff. And uh, what, we're, what we're proposing <coughs> is the second electrician work hours that would overlap with the uh, existing position that we have. Um, work hours about from 1 to 9.30 p.m so that when two electricians are required to work together, uh, they can do that, but that the second electrician will also be available after school hours um, to work on spaces that are occupied during the day when our, our current electrician would have to work on overtime in order to, to do that work. Um, another need that we that we've kind of perceived for a while now is uh, to bring the, uh, uh, the street light maintenance in house. We, we've been uh, using contracted street light maintenance for a number of years since the town took over the system from then what was then CLMP. Um, and frankly, it just it hasn't been all that satisfactory. We don't think the service has been what it what it needs to be to the public, and we saw this second electrician as an opportunity to <coughs> take that work in house and, and save some money. It's not uh, specifically well. Some of these savings are are uh, called out in this handout, but if you just looked at the street light maintenance portion, where we propose to have this electrician work. Um, I think it's 12 to 16 hours a week on streetlights by bringing it in-house, saving the cost of the annual contract of $74,000. When you add all the expenses that would be required, the materials, uh, an aerial truck, we still come up with a, a savings for just that portion of the work of about $16,000 a year. Um, in addition, some of the other contracted work we're, <coughs> we're currently doing could be brought in house and um, including the emergency light inspection. Additional uh, benefits that we have that are kind of unquantified are, are just reducing the backlog of work. Um, we have a number of projects which I list on the, I list some of them on the back that uh, work that has been deferred uh, recently because we just don't have enough uh, uh, manpower with one electrician to get it done. Um, but just quickly, if looking at the annual costs, I list the salary, the fringe benefits, uh, the supplies for street lights, the aerial truck purchase, which would be amortized over a 15-year life, and the operation and maintenance cost of the truck. And then estimating the annual savings, we have the, the cost of the streetlight contract. Um, we're, we're estimating the current electrician's overtime would be reduced by about two-thirds. Uh, we would bring the emergency lighting uh, inspections and repairs in-house. And then finally, the, the items that I can't really quantify, the cost of def uh, delayed projects and deferred maintenance. <coughs> A couple of the assumptions that we did, that we built into this, is that it would take us uh, about four months after July 1st to make the transition uh, to uh, hire an electrician, uh, get the truck, get everybody up to speed, and have uh, and terminate the contract of the 
street light maintenance contract. Um, and I guess I could pause for questions. Okay, questions on electrician. Bill? No, I'm just pointing down that way. Cindy? I do. Thank you for the overview. And I applaud the department for maintenance of street lights. And in particular, Thompson those lights that have been neglected, not maintained properly by someone thing. So I'm looking at this as a positive throughout town, but especially I know a few years back to Matt Sound and I were on the subcommittee to work on that issue. But again, with the CLMP not doing their job up to our standards. Ed, yeah, the I'm on that on on the public works committee, so I I was in favor of this, but I have a question about: Are we going to still need to have a contractor for places where we have holes? <coughs> underground what do you call it are we still going to need to hang on to someone for material for contracting for holes etc and those types of lights good question the point i i missed uh yeah we did we did still include i think ten thousand dollars in the budget for what i call extraordinary repairs that we couldn't handle uh, like uh erecting a pole if it got knocked down that yeah, sort those, of thing those areas where they're because I didn't see that. Okay. Joey? Well, how much did we spend last year on uh, contractors for a rob to come help our guys for electrical? If you're, you're referring to outside of the street light thing. <coughs> right, right, regular. This, uh, this electrician position. I think primarily we spent money on the emergency lighting inspection and repairs um, of about $14,000. I think most, if not all, and uh, I'm looking for Mark and it just kind of, uh, I think most of, or if not all, the other uh, work was done in-house. Well, I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm for doing a lot of stuff in-house. And, and, and we, Ken and I, when we first got on, pushed for a lot more to do, to stuff to do in-house. But I just, I can't see this electrician. I, I think, first off, a lot of the stuff that we've been paying overtime would probably be just as cheap to have a contractor come out. Because I know at one time we weren't paying a lot of money per hour for a contractor. He supplies the van, he supplies all the stuff he needs, and um, when there's no work for him, we don't pay him. The fixing the street lights, I mean, personally, I, I was on the ground floor when we when we purchased them, and, and that was a disaster. I mean, we should have just left them with CLMP. But I think us, us trying to fix them, it's gonna even be worse, because they're gonna start going and we're not going to get out there and fix them and uh, our aerial's too short or I think that there's certain things that we should stay out of. I think we should use subcontractors for some things when it's going to be advantageous to us. And I really, with this economy we have in this budget, I don't think we need another electrician. It's you know, I think it's time we start looking into different ways instead of getting more top heavy and more top heavy with with employees. I mean, we're just we're building these departments so big now that it's going to be such a steamroller. We're never going to be able to stop. So I, I'm against an electrician. I would love to see some numbers on how much we have a contract for an uh, electrician that we pay out. How much it costs us for the overtime that we've spent on our electrician is paid plus whatever benefits and I'd like to see where the cost savings is and how much it is before I would would support it I'd, I'd like to see that okay. well, 
Red? Yeah. Well, this Peter workload. Got no Peter workload, no school and police department and IT. Can you give me more detail on what you expect on that? Well, um, I think since the town took took over the uh, maintenance of the school the school buildings, it it's fallen to buildings and grounds to do the the cabling work for all these devices that are proliferating, and all these security uh, systems and panic alarms. Uh, but they're just generally today's. You know, it's a fact of life today. There's more and more data needs, and there's more and more computers out there, and um, you know, Butch is having to to run a lot more cabling. The IT department does not do that. Shouldn't that be in the security budget, the school security budget, on here on ours? I mean, why are they going to have it there, and we're going to have it here, and we're going to see a duplication? Uh, I don't know. That's above my uh, pay grade. I don't know the answer to that, but I know <laughs> that there's money in there for school security, and now you're saying the same thing. So I'm going. I, I would question that right away. If Matt's shaking his head, no. Yeah, no, no, no. But <laughs> no. Um, the you know what, what? What he's talking about is when we're doing any pulls of, uh, you know, moving around. Because one of the things that does happen in the schools is they will relocate um, classrooms, and if it's relocated and they have to, you know, put any type of uh, um, of the data in there, we would have to pull the cable for that. But my guess is at Stowe, you're pulling a lot of cable for that for the computers and everything else. So that's, you know, when we look at some of the IT projects that we do, it's a lot cheaper for our people to do it than to pay a company to come in and do it. It's three to four times the cost to get a company to come in to pull that, that cable. So, you know, school security, that's you know, other than maybe some alarms, are you pulling anything for cameras or anything else? Or are you? Yeah, we're, we're pulling for power for the, the automatic doors. Okay. But like cameras and the other stuff, you're not doing anything. Right. So it's very limited what they're doing. And that wouldn't be at all contained in the school's budget. Because we pay for all we, of that. We have money in for school security too, not just in the school budget. Uh, just I try and understand what right. he's but putting money, forth here. Right. What are you going to do with the police department? And just, just so we're clear. so. When, when they're doing something that is related, like to that project, my guess is the, the uh, supply costs are all coming out of the CIP. So that's being paid for. So again, it's just you know, the time of our employees to actually do the work that would be not covered within the, the CIP for those projects. Does that include IT too? Any work that they're doing? Again, if, if they are buying any materials or equipment for that project will be coming out of the CIP. Their time working towards it is not paid for through the school security uh, CIP. But he also has IT here, and if I misunderstood you, Matt, some of his power that you're putting in there is for IT too, is it? I'm sorry, I don't. It, you know, it, it could be. Again, we'd have to look at it project by project what they're doing. Right. Well, I'm looking at a sheet here that says you want another electrician. Now, I know the law in certain times, in addition with OSHA, requires two people there. You can't have one in certain instances. Okay. But I'm trying to rationalize whether we need another electrician or not. And I need more information. Okay, I'm not saying I'm for, I'm not saying I'm against, but I'm saying that one clause there on these greater workload is what's bothering me because I need to understand the workload before I can make a decision on this. And right now you haven't given me enough, Billy. All set, Red? Yeah. Gina. Donna. Questions. One is if we do performance contracting and that passes and we change the type of lighting, how does this scenario get affected? 
that's one of the things that's the low hanging fruit is they can calculate that and get your savings right away um, well I guess it would have it would have a limited effect on the need for somebody to get on a lift and do that kind of uh, lighting um, replacement of bulbs and so forth but actually our custodians do most of that in the building so this would be the street lights would be changed oh, out street lights oh I'm sorry I misunderstood that's okay um, well it would uh, <laughs> The, the LEDs, if that's the mm -hmm. way we go, or even the uh, induction, which is another possibility, would uh, certainly lower the need to, to replace bulbs. Right. You know, to replace the lamp. The LED doesn't really yeah. have a lamp, but right. relate, uh, replace bulbs, we wouldn't have that need. You'd have the other just routine things that, that go wrong, uh, wiring, photo cells that get dirty and the lights come on too early and, or, or don't function but we we'll certainly uh, reduce the need we for reduce uh, the need, street light we've... maintenance no doubt okay. about it and i guess the other thing is i guess you made a comment on you know replacement of poles and things like that if that happens on an accident we do recoup the money from the perpetrator we try we try you try okay <laughs> We go after their insurance. Yeah. You do? Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, gee, I'm not yeah, understanding. We're going back Thank you. With the one right now that they want to pay us about half of what it costs us to replace the pole. So. Okay. Thank you. Tom? You know, I'm always in favor of licensed tradesmen. You know, the town hasn't always had licensed tradesmen. We've just gotten to this, I think during the school when we consolidated with the schools we took on a lot of licensed tradesmen and since we've taken on a, li a lot of licensed tradesmen we, it's an, enabled us to do these fantastic renovations that we probably haven't been able to totally do before without a lot of outside contract including all the havoc work all the uh, all the elect electrical work the skilled labor with carpenters um, renovation of the town hall stove uh, Alcorn uh, the Angelo Lamagna Center. I mean, they've all taken tradesmen to do, and we've gone as a council, I think, in a, in a direction that we've never seen before. From you know, especially buildings and grounds, and and I I love that trend, and that trend is great when we can do all this great work. And we're sitting in a room that right down to the tables uh, is from building and grounds. So you know, I'm not against having another licensed electrician the only question i had was kind of sort of what you had i thought we had talked earlier that they were going to share a lot of more duties it's it sounds like this is to me this is all they're going to do or he is or she is going to do but you really have more plans on that workload for that person also at one point i thought we discussed that you know is that all the and, and I guess that's the question. It, aren't you going to be able to use an electrician too, a second shift electrician, to do other things other than just street lights? Or is that oh, definitely. I, and I, and that's, I, that's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to... I neglected to mention one of the reasons that we set the hours the way we did was so that work could be done after school hours when the students have gone home or even in town buildings after the folks have gone home for the day they can work in, in spaces that would otherwise be occupied and that uh, would reduce the need for some of the overtime and, and that was the, the huge point a year ago maybe when we discussed it before because i don't think it made last budget i don't know matt was that true we because we had these these discussions on this and and Two now years ago when it was when it was proposed last right and that wasn't including the street lights now right. now we have the street light factor that it almost made budget back then because we're going to do a lot of that night electrical work in the school buildings and now we have so many buildings that um, it makes more sense now to me. Thank you. Is that Mike? Uh, Tom, sorry. Yeah. Joey? Uh, while you're doing my other figures, can you figure out what it costs us an hour for this man with benefits on no overtime week, just a regular 40 hour week, how much an hour? figure with all his benefits you know soup to nuts on what it's going to run us and um, 
where in our budget is this aerial truck? Are we leasing it or are we buying it? Which is going to, and, and how much was the cost of the aerial truck? Uh, we got a price of $180,000. We estimated it's probably been 15 years. That's why I included over 15 years, it's $12,000. So in this, year. in this budget, we have an additional $180,000 for an aerial truck. It's in, <clears throat> to me, it's in the capital replacement because we have to replace our aerial truck. Well, that's what I was want, and that's where I was getting. Are we going to replace our aerial? If we didn't have this position, would we replace our aerial truck? We have to be replacing it. Yes. And when? Would it be this year, and or would it? My be? thing, I thought it was this year. They're looking. Are we speeding it up to? in the plan it's in our replacement plan right but was it for this year or was it for as next part, year it's additional it's listed as an additional not a so it's an additional right so if this position doesn't exist then this aerial truck doesn't exist and we be cutting out a couple hundred thousand dollars actually almost three hundred thousand dollars out of the budget that's all well, you know, I thought, because I know for the last three years, I've seen the aerial up for replacement. It is insufficient for what you're using it for, for the current one. Mm -hmm. So, I don't have a spreadsheet going out. I can't tell you where it's, where supposed, it's supposed to be replaced, but uh, I'm looking at this year. It's not in here. Um, I have it as 2020. And that's 704. And that's our bucket lift truck. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else on the second electrician position? Any further questions? Okay, Jonathan, continue. Thank you. <clears throat> so I think we uh, discussed everything we want to for tonight about the electrician. Um, moving on to the no, I, I, there's other more questions than I've been answered. That's fine. Good. Yeah, keep moving along. Move along. Um, yes, move along. You all encourage me to move along. That's what we're going to do. So this is the buildings and grounds. This is the capital improvement plan for the buildings and grounds. We'll go through each division. They have a variety of equipment um, in here. And they also have, towards the bottom, you can see those uh, initials VRP. That is a vehicle replacement plan, which we referred to earlier. And so they have a number of vehicles that are due for replacement or proposed for replacement as of today in that plan. Here's pictures of some of those vehicles and equipment. Uh, moving on to custodial. Another example of before and after work, this is the Hazardville Memorial gym floor. Before and after, and just as an aside, the old bleachers that were in the, ha on the gym are being reused to the extent that they can in the old, uh, in the wood shop down there to help build new cabinets or whatever. They're trying to, again, reuse and recycle as much of that equipment as they can, or much of those bleachers as they can. Now the custodial, uh, has a large per percentage of personnel costs. So the factors I talked about early on about health insurance and contractual salary increases will affect this <coughs> budget more than another one because it's, it's person more personnel based. One of the issues we still are struggling with is the whole part-time uh, overtime budgeting. I'll have a slide next on that. We do have a new cleaning standard policy in place this year, uh, and in the last year or two, we've done things with, I believe, our custodial staff and cleaning. The biggest 
hit uh, from the Harry Beecher Stowe School coming online is to the custodial budget. You can see that $169,000. So overall, it's a 6% increase. Now, with regards to the overtime and part-time plan, uh, the goal was several years ago to ramp up our part-time <coughs> staffing and reduce the overtime. And we've been partially successful doing that. The blue is the part-time, the red is the overtime. Uh, we've projected this year and, and where we're budgeting next year. The challenge has been keep, get it, keeping part-time fully staffed. We have 10 part-time custodians in the budget, plus one for Stowe. Um, and, it, and again, the challenge has been keeping 10, it, 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 just with turnover and hiring and so on, we've been around eight. So that's, that's been affecting us, but we've really been making a go at it this year. So we are reducing the overall dollars. The question is, is the, are our efforts, the cost of our efforts exceeding the savings, number one, and number two, what is the end game? What, what can we hope to get if we were ultimately successful keeping 10 part-timers on here? What would that total expense be? And we struggled with that internally, and we, you know, we proposed getting some outside help to help us with that. But we'll continue to move in this direction uh, unless council tells us otherwise. On the capital improvement plan for custodial, uh, a lot of piece, smaller pieces of equipment, and there is one van again in the vehicle replacement plan. Moving on to the highway division. Of course, on the right side is our lovely Dura Patcher, which we, we all love dearly, and we got this year. Left side, of course, is snow removal. And um, with the highway, we have continued to budget money for cleaning half our catch basins. And as you know, there are new stormwater rules pending. And the first draft of those stormwater rules, we estimated it could cost the town of Enfield an additional $300,000 or more, it was hard to say exactly. Those rules are, have been um, sent back to DEP. They're being revised. We don't have the final rules. It will certainly be less onerous than what the initial one is, but we don't know what the final rule is and we haven't been able to assess what those costs are. We have not included any significant increase for new compliance rules in this budget something that's out there, something we're going to have to address. Um, we do have one algae treatment for freshwater pond, and we have included in the CIP the cost for a Durapatcher tank, a 3,000 gallon tank that we would have at Moody Road so we wouldn't have to drive to Farmington to fill up with uh, the emulsion sometimes twice, three times a week. So we've included that there. Uh, we do have a sheet, uh, we have a report on the Dura Patcher, and we can pause and hand that out now or wait till we get to the capital page. There is a savings in gasoline here, but a significant increase in workers' comp and overall about a 4% increase. Uh, one thing uh, we wanted to point out, the council's interested in the annual cost of winter operations. Uh, this is highway only. So we projected this year, uh, we don't have all the numbers in yet, but if you look at this historical chart of, again, the highway only winter operations, if you include this year, four of the last five years have been pretty expensive. And the last two years, we didn't keep going back. We had to transfer money in for the highway operations. This year, we've already made one transfer for highway operations and we didn't, complete it, we didn't come for the overtime, that's the last little bar. So in the highway division alone, we're looking at almost a million dollars for snow removal this year. That's significant. This year was extraordinary, we all know. I think we counted like 26 storms, and we normally budget for 12 so far, and many of them were on weekends, etc. You've heard the story. So it's really a extraordinary expense. Huh? We lived the story. Yes, you, you lived it. 
So again, on the highway in the capital improvement plan, there are several vehicles in the vehicle replacement plan and some equipment, which again, we can go into as much or little detail as you'd like when we get to the capital section. Whoops. Moving on to fleet. A um, couple pictures of the parts area, the tire storage area. Um, one of the things we've talked about for several years is replacing the fuel tanks and assessing a surcharge and everyone who uses the fuel. Uh, that issue, I understand, is still outstanding. It hasn't been resolved. Uh, there's an increase in the fleet budget for, as I said, the headwinds. Uh, Rick Davenport, the fleet manager, has worked very hard with Derek on the vehicle replacement plan, and Rick will be keeping that up as, as we go forward. There is a new policy the town adopted on getting rid of assets asset disposal so anything over two thousand dollars that we value over two thousand dollars you're going to have to approve so we you should expect to see some of those things coming to your council meetings in the near future we've developed a form and a process so anything over two thousand dollars we're we're still planning to use internet auctions as we did before and you'll see that on our recommendation you have to approve that but that's something new this year and we have an inventory uh, task that we're going to kick off as soon as the part-time person gets up to speed and we feel that they can manage the, the new inventory. We don't want to do a whole inventory uh, analysis and set up and then not be able to manage it and have it lapse back to where we are. So we have someone who we're training and as soon as we feel they're ready we're going to hopefully kick off that effort. Something that the council's found interesting in the past is the fuel usage by departments uh, outside agencies, still the largest user of fuel in the town. Uh, what's interesting is that the amount of gas, this is gas and diesel, that was used last calendar year is virtually identical to the year before. However, that was. Everyone, there didn't seem to be much change in that despite a, a drop in pricing. As I said, we did budget a decrease in gas pricing. I don't know about everyone else here. And as a result of the Moody Road Safety Committee, uh, fueling hours for outside agencies have been reduced. Uh, moving on to refuse and resource management. Again, we're one of 20 communities in the state that have municipal collection, mostly communities similar size to Enfield. In the budget, they act, refuse and resource management actually had a decrease in the overall budget and that was due to two main factors. One was the workers' comp allocation went down by $90,000 and they, because of the um, reduction in gas prices, they had a $57,000 decrease in their gasoline budget. So overall, almost a 3% decrease. But the budget still includes two shredding days, two hazardous waste days, Christmas tree grinding, uh, pro new programs that are kicking off this year on recycling textiles, mattresses, and new initiatives for recycling in town buildings and schools. In terms of uh, vehicle replacement plan, a couple pieces of equipment in there for refuse and resource management, and then some other equipment as well. Some of the programs you've seen these ads, and uh, just to remind you, there's a textile that'll be kicking off in April shredding, hazardous waste also in April. Finally, water pollution control, which again, this is a town manager's slide. I don't think I added to it, so you've seen it before. Uh, this is, these are pictures of the sewer jet lining project we did this year, which we hope to continue annually. You're all aware of the facility plan upgrades. We don't need to spend a lot of time talking about the wastewater treatment plan because you've heard a lot about it. There's a facility plan going on. The overall budget is a 4% increase. Uh, a lot of that's due to, again, insurance reallocations. There is one part-time person, new person included in this budget for grease trap inspections. And Kevin can answer questions about that if you'd like. The facility plan study underway, hopefully going to referendum in November. Capital improvement 
plan for water pollution control includes three vehicles, safety equipment, pumps, infrastructure, and a belt filter press. So let's just talk about the capital equipment again. This is the $26 million in the purple. We'll spend a couple minutes on that. Again, this is a manager's slide from a couple weeks ago. This is his capital improvement program. And most of the items on the right, not all, but most of them are either for public works or gonna flow through public works. This is a, how we get to the $26 million. We have $987,000 in the vehicle plan. There's equipment, there's other capital. Then we have roads from the new referendum. We have leftover money from the 2010 referendum. We have some other projects and we have water pollution control and that totals $26 million. Just a quick roads recap. This is the money from the 2010 that's left over. This is the, these are the projects in the queue, totaling a little over nine million. You can see Mullen Road is on there, red. To answer your question before. Still planning to do those culverts this year. And in terms of 2015, this is the new referendum money, trying to stabilize funding and projects at about 12 million a year. So this is this year, next year, what we're working on. These are some other projects that we're calling engineering or capital projects, which you may or may not be familiar about with. And the bottom one is a South River Street Bridge project, which uh, we get 80% of that as grant money. To the extent there is extra funding or additional funding available, these are some of our priorities. Part-time environmental health and safety person, workforce study of custodial operations about that part-time <coughs> issue. Uh, we're looking to dust off the truck wash bid documents and get that out to bid because we think that's gonna be required for new stormwater regulations. Uh, and then the others are traffic signals, storm drain lining, pothole patching equipment. I know there was some interest in the council about what's called a hot box to supplement the Dura Patcher you're so inclined and then the South River Street Bridge project some other items to consider I think you're all aware of these there's facility plan on the water pollution control there's also another facility plan going on with Honeywell and a company called SBS looking at roofs windows parking lots etc and energy issues the Enfield High School project of course the other three things are variable hard to budget for energy, weather, and referenda. So again, summary of the operating budget, a little under 5% department-wide, and I appreciate your patience, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. I want to thank our staff for all their help in the presentation and the budget. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Cindy, then Tom, then Ed. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight also, for the extra time. I just have two questions regarding the town manager budget reduction. Um, half of an environmental h and engineer is done. The environmental health and safety engineer? Half meaning? Meaning it was a part time. part time. Well, there's it is spread in two different uh, cost centers. It's in administration and then in WPC. That's why it's half. Okay, got you, got you. Okay. So you're suggesting not to put that. But Jonathan, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we recommended it, and the manager's discretion. He didn't feel it was appropriate at this time. So we have a handout if you want to read some more about yes. it. What we submitted, we can yes, pass this could, around. That'd be great. I'd like to learn more about that position. Okay. And also, my second question is about the skip order with attachments. What exactly is that? And why we talk about that? That was something for the water pollution control. Kevin, would you please come up and talk about the skid steer a little way? Okay, so it's called the EHS. Just yeah, like that. Environmental Home High School. Environmental Health and Safety. That's I know. 
That's a field high school for all of us yeah. here at the table. Yeah. Kevin uh, Schlatz from Water Pollution Control can address the skid steer loader. The, skier, the skid steer loader was uh, to help us assist clearing our trunk lines, but also for snow removal and daily work um, projects around the wastewater treatment plant and the pump stations. So the, it was the price of a skid steer and about four attachments. So we don't have one currently, is that correct? The DPW does have one, the WPC does not have one solely dedicated to it. So it's not a good idea to share, it's better to get an extra one, is that it? No, we, one of my uh, mantras that my, my team is sometimes gets mad at me about is I, I'm pushing the sharing of equipment and we are doing a lot of it and whenever possible we do it. Kevin felt that uh, certainly with, uh, he's talking about his trunk lines, he kind of glossed over it. We have a lot of sewer lines that are running through the woods and if we need to access manholes or issues with those sewer lines, we need to clear basically a path through heavy wooded areas. Uh, and so he, he recommended that we buy a piece of equipment and when possible they would try and set up a multi-year plan to clear those paths so that when and if we had an issue with those sewers, it would be easier to access. That that, was, so that, that currently is not in your budget from your manager. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate that information. Yes. Um, on the custodial overtime, back way back up, there was a point we we're going to track that a little more closely. I know that um, for you, um, the, uh, we would, we're going to get a little better numbers on, you know, where actually is the overtime being incurred? Is it basketball games at, at in sport, sports activities? Is that like number one? And you know, or is it a uh, stripping floors? Um, you know, where is the custodial staff? Uh, and I don't need that right now unless you have it. But um, if we could get a breakdown of where the real peak is, because uh, then I see that three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in, in uh, you know overtime costs, would it be you know a good idea to hire a crew just to do strip floors? So we get three guys that do nothing but strip floors and cut that down, as opposed to uh, you know trying to keep part timers on, which is very difficult. And, and that's what I was curious on where the peaks were. We. We didn't reanalyze it this year, but last year, uh, Kenny Keto, who's a custodial supervisor, spent quite a bit of time keeping track and, and coming up with those numbers. So we can give you please that. Please, please. It's, it's a couple years old. It, it's, it's very resource intensive to get that kind of data, but we did do it a few years ago. Uh, so we can give you that kind of breakdown. And you were going to get analyze this anyway coming up. You were looking to get it, uh, you know, a yeah, we were consulting looking, in there to find out. We we're looking to get some outside assistance because, quite honestly, amongst ourselves internally, we spent many hours looking at all this data and trying to figure out exactly what to do. We think we know what we're doing, but the results aren't demonstrating that. So at some point you say, well, we really don't know what we're doing and maybe we need some extra help. And that's, that's where we are. So. No, and, and I encourage that, that uh, attitude, too, to find out, get an outside perspective sometimes is, is an awesome idea. Yeah. And, uh, but if you can, if you, even a couple-year-old one, I'd be curious. Thanks. Yeah. Good That's talk. it. Ed? Uh, I guess two questions. One, uh, on the storm drains, I thought we did half of them one year, and, we, and then we're in the process of doing the other half. The catch basin, the catch basin. Clean. yeah, the, the goal is to do them every other year. So we've been budgeting 50% this year, 50% next year, and then we'll go back and, we'll and back again. keep doing them, yeah. And the other question is the sewer, whatever you call it, you're relining the sewers, is that going to be an ongoing type of thing now to replace, or only where there we know that you Place. Like we did South Road, right? Just recently, right. I'll ask Kevin to come up because uh, <laughs> I think I think we understand that over time, you know, that is a cost-effective way of of repairing sanitary sewers that are buried deep below the road, as opposed to digging them up, is to do this lining, 
and I know that the manager is very supportive of doing that, basically building that in every year. But Kevin, I, you want to talk about a little bit about the results? Is that going to be an ongoing? Thing? It's going to be an ongoing thing. There's 250 miles of sewer line. Um, Hundred thousand dollars gets you a couple miles of relining, depending on the size of the pipe and where it is. So we're looking at at least 10 to 15 years going out. To do it all. Basically. Do it all, probably about half to three quarters. You got you got 250 miles. There's a lot out there. We're right now we're getting where we know they're bad and when we find an issue but we're trying to come up with a plan with the facilities plan of getting a more concrete steady way to go at instead of just oh we got a major leak here let's go attack that and just the the based on what Kevin did with the sewer lighting last year one of the to be funded if money allows was called we had up there storm sewer lining which we haven't done at least in the recent past so basically using the same technique in that case on Drummond Road where we think the storm sewers are pretty bad as opposed to digging up the road we were if money allowed proposing to go and line the storm sewer too that was on the to-do list that was on that list so this process can be used for both basically. yes it can Joey? Skid steer. I mean, I know one skid steer will do the work of 10 people, but uh, you want the skid steer to clear, clean the trunk lines out? Correct. Why don't we just rent the skid steer during the winter months? Because you're not going to do it in the summer or the spring because they get too soft and just clean them out for now and get that going instead of buying one. That was one of the options we're looking at. We're looking at about 50 miles in the woods, approximately. We didn't realize how much was in there until we started adding numbers. Well, uh, when was the last time we went and cleaned them? Before I started working here. <laughs> um, probably. I mean, that's something we really can't do during the summer or the winter. I mean, you got to do it during the winter to really get stuck. <laughs> this winter wasn't advantageous for us. Um, problem is, we always end up with an emergency. It's usually in the summertime with kids. Um, that was last year. We had kids out in between Bess and Mullen Road, and uh, we were out there for a good almost a week. 24, 24, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, that was one of the things we were looking at was doing a management plan to see what actually needed to be done. Usually when we need it, it's an emergency and two o'clock in the morning. Well, they have a schedule and they, all through the winter they go down and they clean the, all of the, the, you know, the, the sewer lines. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying, you know, probably rent one for now anyway. Yes, that, that, that is an option. Are we good? Yeah. Anyone else? Questions? Public works? Water pollution control? Gina? Thank you. Um, just so I can match your <coughs> presentation with sort of what I've been looking at in the book. If you go, we have it on page P297. You guys um, proposed $10,000 just for other professional services for their current or previously with zero. I don't know. Which I division? Know. Yes, that, that's, that's a fee for, um, to help us make the reports for the stormwater. It's called the MS4. That's what's listed in there. We budgeted $10,000. We have to do an annual report. And that wasn't required before? No. Uh, yes. No, no, no. There is, a, there, is, <laughs> there is an annual requirement. The town, as far as we could find, didn't submit a report between 2006 and 2011. Last year, we caught, we did two years. We did 12 and 13 in one book. You don't remember, but they were, we noticed that copies were in the library, town hall, and now we're working on the 2014 report. There is an annual report. There always has been, so we just weren't doing it. 
for a while. You have to focus on this now because the new legislation is coming forward. Uh, this, the report is irregardless of the, any new rules or requirements. We had, it was part of the original rules back in 2004 that you do an annual report. No, no, we did do one initially, but there was a gap. So we're catching up. We're doing them now. We're going to do them annually now. Thank you. Questions, public works, water pollution control. Are we good? I'm sure more will come up over the course of time. So then we thank you very much thank for your you. presentation. Um, appreciate all of you being here this evening. Matt, is there anything else? So at quarter to eight, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn by Cindy Seconded by Tom. All those in favor? All those opposed? We are adjourned.